guys welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Omen Michelle aka Empress of Bookingham and this is my kingdom if you love books if you love poetry if you love art if you love crafts if you love tv shows which I've not yet covered <laughs> I hope you'll stay I hope you'll subscribe I hope we'll get to know each other I hope we we'll get to interact and I hope we will see more of each other that being said, my last video I talked about a uh, bookshelf tour because the video was a bookshelf re reorganization video. You can check it out on the prompt above. I've done a brief, a brief, <laughs> 30 minutes, a brief bookshelf tour talking about the books that I own. As Ron Weasley once said, it's not much, but it's home. And I love, I love my books. I love my books and I hope that you will see some of your favorites and we'll get to start a discourse on books that you love. If there are books that I haven't read and you would highly recommend, please don't be shy to talk about them in the comment section below. That being said, and with much further ado, let's do this bookshelf tour. I don't read anything. I don't care if it's backlist, new release, so long as I'm reading something that I really enjoy and love it from. Disregard those sounds you're hearing. My dog is flopping down on his board. So, this is my most read shelf. It has a mix of fiction up to a point of here, and then my thriller starts from there. I've already not read about six books uh, Damn Girl Stop That by Joan Thatia, Scarpetta, Port Mortuary, Book of the Dead, The Braved Heart. This is part of a series. Uh, I've read Postmortem. It's the first book in the series. I want to read it accor according to how the, <laughs> the series goes along <laughs> because there's a backstory. You can read them as standalones. Very fine. But there's just that character development and backstory that you'll miss. Same to John Nesbos, Harry Hole series. The same. It's a Nodic Noir. I would highly recommend it. I got to know about this author through bookstagram and i do not regret delving into his work this one is a standalone the headhunters i really really enjoyed this book we started out not loving the main character but <laughs> in the end i came to like respect him and all he went through because he literally went through shit imagine <laughs> that was the most yuckiest scene i ever seen or rather read but, you know, for us readers, we see them in our minds. So, anyway. Uh, the Millennium Trilogy. I really, 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 really love this book. This is part of the series. Uh, after the author died, another author picked up his work. I, I was actually very wary about starting this book. But I ended up really, really loving it. I read it sometime this year. Uh, Martina Cole, I also enjoyed this. Most of my books are backlist book. I don't mind backlist book because ah, you find that you have so much to look forward to, especially if it's part of a series. And also the fact that I'm reading something that's all that matters. When it comes to nonfiction, I really enjoyed A Long Way Gone. Feel really meant to reread it, but I haven't <laughs> gotten there. So hopefully, hopefully this year we'll read it. It's a very beautiful, heartbreaking story. The writing style is just beautiful. It broke my heart. I was busy crying at about 5 a.m. in a public vehicle. Um, I loved, I loved, I loved Not My Father's Son by Alan Cumming. For those who have watched Good Wife, he's, uh, he was somebody's campaign manager. And I really enjoyed it. He also acted Instinct, a uh, TV adaptation of James Patterson's book Instinct, which I really also loved. This is a story of healing. This is a story of letting go all those dreadful childhood uh, memories. It's about forgiving. I had quite an amazing time with it. I also enjoyed It Pray Love. It started in a, when she was in a state of like, she was like going through a break, break what is it called? Breakdown. <laughs> so it was 
she wrote it in a way to reflect exactly what she was going through. So it was a bit confusing, but if you read on, you will learn so much about her trips. The part that I really enjoyed was the pre part because she talks so much about meditation. I've been trying to get back to meditation once. I was quite very good. Uh, right now, I'm doing so much better and reading about her story, how she struggled, gave, gave, gave me so much hope. And the other book that I really, really loved was Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. Uh, it's a story of Nike the brand. Uh, he really goes in depth about what it takes to get a brand off your mind and on the ground running, like running. I also enjoyed the writing style. It was such a deep book. I think I shall also reread it this too. I plan to reread because this year my intention is to reread some of the books that I really loved. I think for this one, because we're, we're trying to create a lasting brand to really, really remind me of why I'm doing what I'm doing. The other book that I really also enjoyed nonfiction is Bonacram by Trevor Noah. Uh, it tells the story of apartheid, tells the story of how he came from the ghetto and how his mom opened up so many avenues for him to expound his imagination because while growing up, when you stick just to one environment, that's all you ever know. If it's in the ghetto, the ghetto mentality most of the time is what you grow up with. But his mom took the time to take him through all uh, the neighborhoods, including the posh ones, and I think that also influenced his life. It's funny book, it's witty. I learned so much about South Africa. It was such a pleasant experience. I've also meant to reread it, not necessarily this, this year. <laughs> uh, the other nonfiction I loved is A Year of Yes. For those who keep on saying no to people, as in everything is no, 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 this amazing, phenomenal woman who is also the is that the writer or the producer of Grey's Anatomy? The creator. Let me say the creator so that you don't come for me. I love that TV show. That's the one TV show that can make me cry like a baby. Yeah? Uh, it's a challenging book. Um, I also enjoyed so much The Opposite of Fate by Amy Tan. Uh, she's a writer. She made me appreciate writers so, so much better. She made me want to give authors that I've read once a second chance because she was like, you know, the first book, especially if it becomes a bestseller, and the second book will be a challenge because there's that pressure of will it do better? There's that pressure to it as good as the first one. Sometimes most of them fail, but once you get through that part, you know, maybe the third book will be better. So I, she talks so much about being a person of color the marginalized authors and it was just so profound um, i also enjoyed the you are a badass i laughed through this book i didn't know i would laugh through it and it was quite quite inspirational i also enjoyed drafts 100 letters i will never send by nicole Celia Sisa, lest she comes for me <laughs> those are letters that she wrote to people with the intent of not sending them <laughs> if you know who you are and your name you'll get to read the letter finally I love books that make you feel things and this is one of those books that make you feel as in feel you get to feel you get to in. even Blair Waldorf was written a letter too oh Conversations with ah, how can I forget to talk about conversations with God? This is a book that I always read every year, and I'm about to just start it this month. I won't say much. If you're interested, you can go Google it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was one of the controversial books, and I love a bit of controversy. So yeah, that's the first shelf, my most read shelf. From here, we can go to my list red shelf. Uh, this is a mix of what is a mix of oh, classics, historical fiction, and literary fiction. If you see a book that's not supposed to be in a literary fiction, please pardon me. 
that is not my genre i'm not very fast with it and then from from literary fiction we jump on to contemporary this way this way this way this way uh from that shelf my most profound read let's see let's start with the fact that the book thief kind of disappointed me i think i went in expecting so 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 much i was waiting for my heart to be broken uh it was quite interesting to see things during that time from the point of view of an innocent german but i felt like the director kind of separated me from this person because i really couldn't feel what they are feeling you know but i understand what he was saying i understood the commentary on the power of words i understand what he was trying to pass through but i was just expecting so much i was expecting to cry like a baby like a baby the other book that i really really loved was the shadow of the wind ah thank god it was a um, body read because the first few chapters were kind of a bit slow and a drag so i feel if i was reading it alone i would have put it aside but thanks to the body read we managed to finish the book and it was beautiful the writing style oh the storyline got to be much thicker than i anticipated uh the other book that i really enjoyed was the joy like club by amy tan i don't think you're shocked considering that i loved her memoir the opposite of fate but at the end of this book i felt like i had lost friends because it was beautiful it's a mother daughter focused book i uh, told from two generation two generations yes two yeah do do i do yes Another book that I really enjoyed was Middle Sex. I love the writing style. I love when authors are intentional about everything they even every full stop has a meaning. The writing style, the naming of the characters, um, the themes. At some point it did drag a bit, but that didn't take away from the story from it. Yeah, so when I saw Virgin Suicide, I said we must get that one. Uh, I also read the Katrana and another body read. For books that are very heavy because I tend to read more of thrillers, crime fiction and mystery. When it comes to heavy books like the Katrana, if there's a body read, I will jump in because I need that support. We had an amazing time with this one. I learned so much about Afghanistan. Some of the things that I had picked up from, you know, television, ignorance were cleared, some verified. Then we have home stretch. We did this while I was in high school. It was a set book. I really, really loved this book. Uh, it's set in it's set in Jamaica, and I think, but I think not. I think this is where my love for reggae music started from, and I've actually read it quite a number of times. I'm actually shocked because <laughs> set book from high school. Good lord! And then we have the storied life of A.G. Fikri. I immensely enjoyed reading this, you know. Books about books are quite fun and it wasn't disappointing. But that ending was oof, ooh, la, la. And then here is my Joe Deep Cult collection. I discovered uh, some time back. I read what was the first book I read by Sister Skipper, if I'm not wrong, and I really loved the writing style. And then also I realized that at the end of her books, there's usually a twist that most of the time you never saw it coming but now that i know there's always twists <laughs> i'm never shocked but it still doesn't take away from that you know twist that shocking twist uh from this stack i haven't i've read seen you home it's an lgbtq plus kind of book she goes in deep she's not afraid to talk about topics that most people shy away from and it was an awesome experience you know I think I believe that was my first LGBTQ read. Yeah, yeah. I will not <laughs> be afraid to say this. And then I feel like oh, this is contemporary. In my mind, it's a contemporary. Uh, last year we read when we were buzzed by Ayana Banu, set in fictional Trinidad and Tobago. It was written in Patois, and I really enjoyed most of the book. And I appreciate, I appreciate what he did because they had two 
narrators. One was Yejide, the other one was Dewin. Yejide's narration was a bit like, you know, confusing because she's stepping into a role that she wasn't initially taught about. So also it was confusing to her. So it was, it was a bit, yeah, it was a bit an experience. And then a man called Ove, we talk about depression, we talk about suicide. It was a beautiful, beautiful story. That ending still broke my heart, broke my heart. Uh, I really loved Gikarella. It's a fan fiction book. Um, you know, young adults. I am a fan of Jenny Colgan. Uh, her contemporary book set, usually in the rural places. She has this formula about a female that is going through something in their life. And then they have to go to someone, some place else, or they have to return home and salvage something. It's just usually so cozy and so nice. Actually, the other day I was reading. This is the stack that of books that I need to review. The bookshop on the corner. I was really laughing out loud. I was busy marking <laughs> passages about books because this is a book that talks about books, and it's just glorious this is one of my favorite books from her it was a reread hopefully we shall reread it again because we live for such any other notable book i also enjoyed this mary k andrews book it made me laugh if a book makes me laugh and swoon at the same time trust me that would be a favorite and then the guardian of all Nicholas Park's books, The Guardian, is by far my favorite. It's not too heavy because I find um, Nicholas Park's books so sad. So sad. So sad that I wonder how is Tom Hanks to write these books. Because words have the power to affect you. So um, uh, this is part of, these are two books in one. Two books here and one here are part of I think the stars of Mithra by Laura Roberts, which I really enjoyed. Those are the first, first books that I ever owned. We bought them from Nakuma Lifestyle when it was in existence. Uh, the next shelf is, this is my thriller. Yeah, thriller starts from here and goes until some place there. And then we start crime fiction, all this procedural mystery. Yes. Uh, because it's Disability Awareness Month, if you're looking for a thriller that has disability rep, this is part of Lincoln Rhyme series by Jeffrey Diva. Our main character is a quad quadriplegic. And this one is book one, The Bone Collector. I think if you have not even read the book, you have heard about the movie. Uh, it's based on his book. And it's the first book, that, and he goes really in depth talking about how the, he became quadriplegic, his mental state, his choice to want to end his life, and why. It was so, so deep. It's tiny, but it's so, so deep. But he has a freaking brilliant mind, which I really, really enjoy. And then we have Dean Kutz. I am a fan of Dean Kutz. I've been collecting his work. The other day, I read The Face of Fear. One of the oldest book by him that I own, which I really loved. Uh, he has this lyrical, poetical way of writing his stories. Uh, most, if not some, ref uh, revolve around this idea about the power of the mind, which I really enjoy. So this is not the whole collection. And then we have James Patterson. We have also other collections from uh, his first book that I ever read was Don't Blink. I lent it to someone. Someone did not return my book. <laughs> But it's okay. We forgive and we learn. Uh, this is a Nordic Noir, which I really, really enjoyed. It's the first book. If you want to jump in on him, it's quite good. Then we have Tess. I love to read more of her works. One of her series was turned into a TV show. If you know it, Rizoli and Ayers, which I really enjoyed. It's her, it's her current solo that I've had. read that one because I wanted to jump in, but somebody told me. Since it's a part of a series, we'll have to like start from the start, you know, start it from the bottom. Now we're here, <laughs> so I have to collect the rest of the books. Um, 
Camilla Luckbag is an, also another Nordic noir that you might want to try. This is the only book I've ever read from her. Who doesn't know about Verity? I really enjoyed that book. It fucked my mind. It was hot and it was cold and it was hot and it, I was like, what the heck? Probably that might be the only book by Colin Fuwa that I will ever read unless she comes with another thriller. But you know, that book is fucked up. Uh, I also enjoyed this one. If you love Dan Brown's Lang Langdon series, you might, if you ever bump into it, this one. This one is set in Rome. Mm. I collect Sue Grafton books. I still have a few to collect. Uh, anything else special here? Uh, Ian Rankin's book. This is part of the Rebus series, Inspector Rebus, or is it Detective Rebus? And he really reminds me of Joe Nisbo's Detective Harry Hole. They have quite similar characteristics, actually. So if you enjoyed his Harry Hole series, you might enjoy this Rebus. Rebus! Rebus! And then we have Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookshop. I enjoyed it. It was talking about traditional knowledge versus digital. And it was quite interesting. And then this is my fantasy stack. We have quite a number of fantasy that couldn't fit here. Some are in those mass market paperback. But I love how it's growing. For those who are, who are not fast with me. Fantasy was one of those genres that used to scare the shit out of me. <laughs> but last year, a group of friends formed a fantasy book club. And I jumped in because, you know, it's good to try new things. And we ended up loving quite a number of books. So far, these are my adult ones. I st I have Brandon Sanderson's other books, which I'm obsessed with. <laughs> I want to have a freaking whole shelf of just Brandon Sanderson. Um, I we read Onika last year and really, really loved it. From people who are from Africa, please beware of dust. <laughs> this represents us and it was such a such a beautiful experience i really loved love 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 what is happening is my shelf falling is my shelf falling uh, are they ghosts <laughs> okay i really really loved a master of jean my god it's a mix of Fantasy mystery set in the steampunk era in Egypt, you know, you know, Africa, you know, you know, this book should have much more ravings. Mm. And I would love to read more of his works, except that horror book. I can't remember its name because me and horror. Oh, no, 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 no. I also love The Final Empire. Oh, my God. I can't wait to get the rest of the books. I made to read The Night Circus. But hopefully next month we shall tackle this and then i will not be doing justice if you don't freaking mention the fifth freaking season this book is phenomenal this book is phenomenal the way the story was told and executed the themes it's quite intricate and i'm so grateful that i had the support system to run back to but it's so so beautiful it's so so i want to read the rest of the series and then I think the next quarter we'll be reading The City We Became, which I've also had great things about. So I think N.K. Jameson is also one of those that I'll love to read more from. Mm, then we go to like children. I tried I tried to be <laughs> I tried to to like go according to age or something of the sort. I think I believe this is the first fantasy I ever read and I was like, what the fuck? I want more. But it's YA. I started with YA. But that's where we started. And now we're here. Melt, I really enjoyed this book. I had the privilege of hosting the author sometime last year. It talks about domestic abuse, depression, suicide. It's a heavy book. I expected it to like, I don't know, to put me in a foul mood as much as it's heavy 
but the way it was executed is uh, I didn't find myself going there. And then we had Clap on Learn. The first book I ever read in verse. This was a gift. I really, really, really loved it. Actually, I want to read it. I think I want to reread every book. <laughs> uh, and then between these two, I really loved Concrete Rules. I loved, I loved this more than Thug. Yeah, I'm that weird. I'm the weird. And then as we go along, this is my dystopian. I really, really loved Legend. You're supposed to read it this year as part of the Fantasy Book Club. And I hope, I hope we shall read it because I loved it. I need to get the rest of the books so that I can finally finish them. And then here we start our African section and then poetry. For here... My God, I really loved reading this book. I'm not really a fan of fan uh, of short stories because I feel like just one story can take away from my pleasure of reading short stories. But this one was quite fun. And what the hell has happened? <laughs> it kind of changed my whole experience, and it was the highlight of reading books last year. It was so beautiful. Another book from Kenya that. We don't talk so much about this once there was a star. It was written by a Kenyan about Somalia. It was well executed. It's a historical fiction, but it is quite heavy. So when you go in, please be wary of trigger warnings such as death, rape, violence, because it's set in a time of war. We cannot forget to talk about one of my favorite, favorite romance from home. This is the third book in a V. Bovisa series by Mona Mbogo. These books are amazing. We had the privilege of hosting the author for one of our IG lives with two of my friends, Frankie and Jules. She had quite deep insights about publishing, how to go about it. Ugh, I'm a fan. She's a playwright, she's a writer, she's in the film industry and i love her books actually this series and then we have have a choice these books retails the post-election violence of 2007 i was still in high school ah, it affected me deeply i know people have quarrels with this book but i immensely love it she had the courage to tell a story that most of us <laughs> trying to forget it will never be written in the school curriculum. So to me, it was profound just like that. Another book. This one, because of its cover. <laughs> because of its cover. Because of its curve. Read under the Udala trees, which broke my heart. But then it was also hopeful. We finally managed to read Homegoing. This book is heavy. This book is heavy. Our stories as Africans are heavy. So when you find a, an author who writes light books full of love and romance and laughter, please pick it up. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. And then here is my poetry section. I cannot forget to mention Rafinki. This was the first book they ever produced. Okay, published. They did that with their own money. And the story is quite beautiful. I also managed to read a Swahili book on poetry. We call them Shairi and it's beautiful. It's a feminist book. I also enjoyed the power of words. and It's an anthology. The beautiful thing about anthologies is that you get a variety of different people telling things from different point of view, different writing styles, different themes. Beautiful, beautiful. Aha, uh -huh. Larry Lisa is one of my favorite, favorite poets from Kenya. Both in written and performance, he always leaves me weeping. Oh my God. Oh my God. And then we have Candy Grammy. I really love this. It's beautiful. The quality, both outside and its content. It's... We have Many Fragile Things by Victorian Gojuri. Which I loved. I loved. I deeply loved the illustration. 
Sorry, Manjalo, this book is sad, heartbreaking. But somebody has got to write those stories. I'm yet to finish this by this flower. She won a Nobel Peace Prize for her works. Okay, and then the final shelf. Because we're only doing the bookshelves. I have these books. I have some over here. But because of how they're arranged, we shall just stick to the bookshelves because it's bookshelf tour. This is my hard book. These are mostly mystery, some literary fiction. Our Brando Sander. I had the privilege to read an arc copy of Inga Where's Your Husband, which I really enjoyed. I have Taraji over there. I love her energy. You can even actually feel it from her books. I loved the help. This book, this book. One of my favorite books of 2022. Mm, I also love, who is it? I, Alex Cross. And I would love to read more from the Alex Cross series by James Patterson. J.D. Robb, this is the in-depth series. It's a romance with a mix of crime fiction set in the future. The romance will have you smiling and laughing. What? <laughs> It's so mature. You can see these two characters coming from broken backgrounds, trying not exactly trying helping each other to heal. It's just beautiful. It's just one of those series that I think I will read and read and never get tired of. And then we have Lambreth. I cannot forget to mention Dania Khan. She published her book when she was 12, going on 13. I stand to be corrected. And it's just beautiful and profound. I was honored to be sent a copy. Woo! I think that's it. Because at this rate, if we go on starting talking about all the books, we might be here forever. So in a nutshell, these are my shelves. We have much more books, but we shall not go into them. I don't want to bore you. This was enough of a tour. Look at the African. I also st I also have another um other books from Africa and Kenya. It's just that there's not enough much space. So like Ron Weasley once said, it's not much, but it's home. So this is not much, but it's my library, and I love, I love, I love, I love it. So yeah, that is Dixie. Thank God he has never beaten any of my books we have we had an anasandi or we have an anasandi there we have it there we have it guys there we have it my library my library i hope you had fun going through it as much as i had fun talking about the books that i loved and enjoyed i am grateful to have books to read and thank you for being in this journey Thank you for watching the video until this part. If you have reached this far, please drop down at bookstack emoji because it will be such an honor to know that somebody took their time to watch this video until this part. And I want to say thank you so much for being part of this journey. I hope that we shall create more. I hope I shall be <laughs> back to making you laugh. And I hope you've been well. I hope you get to read more books that will give you more pleasure to take off the pressure of life. And until my next video. Yer. Yer.